first presenter from Portland, so uh, I'm really excited <laughs> to welcome you all to Portland. Um, and I'm going to be talking about type in the built environment, so I hope you've all had a chance to get out of the context of the, this environment and see Portland and learn a little bit about the way we go about things here. Um, so as mentioned, I serve on the board for SCGD, Society for Experiential Graphic Design. And I thought that that's a good place to start this conversation about uh, the type of work that I do. So what is EGD? Uh, experiential graphic design is the orchestration of typography, color, imagery, form, and technology to define an experience. So we're a global community of architects, interior designers, graphic designers, fabricators, uh, and product developers working at the intersection of communication design and the built environment. We create experiences that connect people to place and create environments which improve the human experience. So our studio, Mayor Reed, is based here in Portland. Uh, we're interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, whatever term you'd like to use. Landscape architecture, urban design, and experiential graphic design. I'm a principal in the experiential graphic design studio. We're located just a couple blocks from here. Our studio is on the eighth floor, and we overlook the river and the city that we design for. We're about 28 people right now. I think a few are missing from this photo. Um, the experiential graphic design studio is there in blue, and even within that group, uh, the lovely thing about working in the studio is that each of us come with our own experience and our own interests. Um, and background, so we have those who are specialized or more interested in color and pattern um, and typography. And my background really is in graphic design and sociology. So this is my way of giving you a disclaimer that I am not a self-proclaimed type nerd. Uh, so I'm interested more in kind of the overall effects of our work and how it works in our society. Um, but don't you worry, we have our very own type nerd, Cooper, here is here today. So. <laughs> Um, but typography is a big part of our work, uh, and we work at large scale, uh, materials, illumination, uh, materials that have some permanence to them, um, things that are less permanent but really kind of wrap in entire spaces. Um, and all of this work that you're looking at here is our, our marketing photos that we capture when a project is done, the integration of architecture and typography. Um, but what I'm more interested in is images like these. Um, so. About a year ago, we had our anniversary in our studio, and we held a photo exhibition called Beyond Opening Day, where we looked back at our work and what our design intent was and what people were actually experiencing with our work. And today being what it is, we have this great resource of social media where people are posting images on Instagram and other sources where they are in a moment where they genuinely want to capture something and we can see the experiences that they've had. Um, so these are some interns that had a day at Daimler, and uh, they got up close and personal with the sign that we had designed to really bring the scale and the materiality of the trucks that Daimler designs to the people who work in the office. So I just, I love this image here. Oops, let me backwards. So I want to, uh, although I think social impact of workplace design is really important because we spend a lot of our day at work, I want to talk to you about a couple of public projects and the responsibility that we have as designer when we're designing for publicly funded projects, projects that become part of our urban fabric, and when the audience is the general public. So some things that we try to keep in mind um, as a studio is, is it appropriate, timeless, accessible, meaningful, and durable. And while some of those don't sound very sexy, I think when they add up all together, you end up with a project that really nails it or it doesn't. Um, and so as I go through these three projects, I'll keep these things in mind and, and uh, how they kind of became part of our design dialogue. So the first project opened in 2013, and we were asked by TriMet, the transit agency, to develop an identity uh, for a new landmark here in Portland. The Tillicum Crossing, we're the city of bridges, and this is our newest bridge. It was the, um, the previous bridge, uh, I think it was the newest bridge in 30 years. So the other significant item about this bridge is that it was the first bridge in the US to be mass transit, pedestrian, and bicycle only, so no passenger vehicles. Really was a statement of our commitment as a city to sustainability. And innovation, the bridge uh, 
it connects to innovation districts in Portland. So we were asked to think about an identity for it that would be innovative and a dedication plaque. And so we looked, started our process by looking around at examples and we found a lot of brass plaques uh, that were centered typography and it just didn't kind of ooze the innovation that we were thinking of. Um, and I kept coming back to this one example from the Golden Gate Bridge that uh, made me think about the idea of timeless, that it certainly was of a particular moment in time when designers were thinking about certain graphic elements and typography form, um, but it stands up the test of time because it, it brings you to this moment of time and understanding what the context was. So I tucked away that thoughts as we went ahead uh, with design and we got to go out onto the bridge while it was being built and here you're looking at plan view. Um, and when they brought us out they said, the one thing is that the bridge designer wanted us to stay away from the columns. The columns are really important to the design um, and that they were thinking that maybe the, the work would be uh, along the edges of the bridge, along the handrails. But we looked at it and said at the east and the west entrance to the bridge, we really need to have this identity mark your entrances to the bridge and it needs to serve our two important users which are the transit users and the pedestrians. And we went back to the client and said it really needs to be on that column. Um, but we explained that we were really interested in the idea of a sculptural letter form uh, that took on some of the concept of the bridge design. They described to us that the bridge is designed with no right angles, that all of the wind spills off of the bridge. Um, and that started to inspire uh, some of our thinking about what that letter form might be. Uh, they got really excited about the idea and they gave us the go ahead to move ahead with a design that would be on the column. So we started with agenda as our typeface as the base, but then quickly moved into 3D modeling to start to understand what happens when this typeface becomes three-dimensional and what is its relationship of mass to the mass of the column. Um, we looked at faceting each individual letter, but ended with a design that facets across the face of all of them to sort of play with the idea of the wind spilling across those letters. Uh, we're able to model what different times of day and light might look like. There's interpretive panels that are on the columns near that that pick up that same faceted form. We modeled it uh, in, in software and then also in paper. Uh, the typographic work there is really when you have no right angles to your page that you're laying out on, what role does typographic layout have? It became a little bit more lyrical, the spacing between the lines, no uh, lines start aligned with each other. And then materiality, it's always really important to get out to the site and hold up your materials, uh, see how that they interact with the, the context of the concrete column. These forms ended up being milled from our 3D software uh, out of solid aluminum and then they're powder coated and you can see we're testing in the different light, kind of how it re reflects the, the light there from the powder coating. Um, so here it is in its uh, final form. I think each letter individually is a lovely object and then together as a group uh, they work quite nicely and you can see in the, in the golden light it feels pretty monochromatic with the column but we learned that different lighting it has really different uh, reactions. So I happened to be out of town when the bridge opened and so it was just killing me. This is something very anticipated by our community and so I was watching Instagram and the telecom crossing hashtag and uh, it just began to quickly populate with people uh, taking their picture in front of the, uh, the identity. Um, and really it's about their experience of the bridge, that's what they're excited about, but often our work becomes sort of the marker of that moment in time of being there. Uh, but beyond the sort of selfies and pictures with it, what I thought was interesting is people really kind of gawking at it or just really admiring the work um, and capturing things that I really don't, did not ever think that somebody would take a wedding photo in front of our work. <laughs> but there you are, <laughs> there it is, which is quite interesting to see. We never modeled what it would look like with snow, so that was fun to see that somebody got out and captured that in our big snowstorm. Um, and all that modeling of light, really, this is how it is a lot in Portland with cloud cover and no light, um, but, and I thought that this picture is great, it just really captures that Portland of spirit of that's not gonna stop my sightseeing, for sure. Um, so the next two projects I'm gonna talk about opened in uh, 2000. 11, uh, and they're gathering spaces, but really quite different. Uh, so intuitive wayfinding to me is really important. 
when we're working in community spaces because it's part of making a space welcoming that if the public can come in and feel that they can find their own way, they, they feel welcomed and that they uh, should be there. So Vancouver Community Library is Vancouver, Washington, just 20, mile, 20 minutes north of here, not Vancouver, Canada. Worked with Miller Hull Architects out of Seattle. Um, at the front of the community library, we had concepted a, a large sculptural identity that would mark this civic plaza. And we purposely went with just library instead of the formal name, because we want it to be inviting to uh, young kids who are just learning and building their connection to what a library is. So the idea was a sculptural letter form. We went with um, interstate for our font. We were, knew that we were gonna be playing around with scale, and, and this is a typeface that scales really well. Uh, also has a, works really well in all uppercase or upper lower, which is important when you're designing a full sign system. So back to that planter, um, some things that we can look at in this view is sort of the idea of once a letter form has depth, there's this relationship between the stroke of the letter and the depth of the letter and legibility. And so we did play around with painting the sides a different color to keep the legibility, but ended up keeping the monolithic green color. Um, and it, it infills a little bit, but we still think that it works quite well. Uh, they're fabricated out of steel for durability, so kids could actually climb on these and they would hold up, which requires a specific paint system to hold up in that condition. So talking about context, the librarians were really worried that uh, young readers who are just starting to really recognize letters would come out of the library and see the letters in reverse and that that would be sort of damaging to their letter development. Um, so uh, luckily the, the landscape uh, architects were in our studio and so we collaborated with them and went through many different planting uh, scenarios. And so this is a pretty close to after installation, you can see the planting is low. Uh, but the planting is bamboo, which is fast growing, and, and its intent was to grow straight up behind the letters, and that if it's pruned, that it would grow uh, quickly and cover the back of the letters again. Um, so we went back and visited, and I, I don't know if it's a maintenance issue <laughs> or uh, if it was planting, but the bamboo just loved those letters so much, it grew through and up and around, and I actually think it's something that is uh, quite lovely, and uh, you couldn't have planned it, and I don't think we could have sold that design to the client. Um, but because the plants reach out and touch the letters, I just love that it also invites everybody to reach out and touch the letters and engage. Um, so it, I think it's quite successful in that way. Um, and then they've used it as a backdrop. They have a piano there in the summer. And I can't tell, but I don't think these kids are being damaged by seeing the tops of those letters. I think they're, <laughs> I think they're doing OK. <laughs> um, but the intuitive wayfinding continues as you come into the library. It's a, a three-volume space. On the monumental stair, uh, we took uh, the collection and printed it on the bottom of the stair, the concrete stairs. So children, nonfiction, and fiction. Um, they're masked and painted so you can see the texture of the concrete through. Um, and that horizontal text was picked up in a piece that is next to it. Uh, we did not design it by Aldridge Pears. Uh, but I think it's a nice sort of connection of our work is the literal ascension of uh, the library and theirs is a little bit more lyrical. So there's words like question uh, and wonder and it picks up on the horizontal type and casts a shadow. So the last piece that I want to talk about is um, a homeless shelter that we worked on that also opened in 2011. It's here in Portland, Bud Clark Commons, with Holst Architecture. Again, our firm was the landscape architect and uh, experiential graphic design. So this is often the experience outside of a homeless shelter where uh, people are queuing up to receive services. And when we joined, uh, uh, were asked to be on this project, we weren't sure exactly what our role would be or what we could add to it. But um, you know, homelessness is a real issue here in Portland, and uh, it's it's not a great experience to to wait on the sidewalk. And then there are these really nicely graphic designed signs that tell you you're not welcome there. Um, and so it's it's a it's a difficult situation. So the new building is right across the 
street from the train station. So it is at an entryway to Portland. So as people are coming into Portland, it's at the front door. So there's a lot of discussion about how to be a good neighbor and, and, and what the design of the building could do. So um, you can see there that there's a courtyard that was designed really as a place that the queuing up for services could happen off of the street. And that's an important part of the design because it did mean that there was a gate to the front of that courtyard that would need to be secured at certain hours. And that created a canvas for us to add some work. We worked with the group that runs the program uh, to come up with the content, which is quotes from uh, interfaith background that they use in their services. And so it's a way to greet people who are waiting on the street with uh, a bit of dignity uh, and inspiration that they can take from it, which you can at different days, depending on how the words hit you. Um, this is the courtyard. Uh, on the right, you'll see there's a pattern that the architects developed was an architectural screening. I note that, that the shadow that it cast has this kind of dappled light. And uh, that was something that we talked a lot about, about how do we bring these kind of softening experiences to this experience that for technical reading reasons had to be kind of a harsh environment because of safety concerns that they had. Um, so we were asked uh, when we came up with the concept of the type in the gate, should the letter forms actually be hand done? Is that the humanizing part of it, that it's a human, it's a script? Um, and so we studied that, but uh, it gave, we lost some things in that. So one thing that we lost is transparency, just the technical aspect of holding that letter form. There had to be a lot more solid. Um, and the other thing that we lost is accessibility in terms of legibility. Uh, there's a lot of people in this uh, user group that are low English speaking um, or low literacy, and so a legible letter form was really important to us. And so we, we came back to this concept of a very legible letter form that had more transparency, and it was at this point that the city said, this is not an art piece, and this is not an architectural element. This is a sign, because there's text on it. And so it means it had to meet sign code, and the square footage had to become less. Uh, and at the moment, I thought it was a, a big failure. Uh, but this is the design. You can see the text is move up, and the architectural pattern continues across the bottom. In the end, it's actually very nice that that happened, because uh, there's splatter and uh, things that happen at the bottom of the gate, and it's nice to have the words kind of up out of that area. Um, so we used Avenir uh, because of its architectural form. We felt like it complemented their architectural pattern nicely. It had the integrity that we needed to hold up the gate. The gate is made out of uh, weathering steel, so it starts as raw steel and it weathers over time. The attributes are double thick, and we pre-weathered them so they're rusted, uh, a little bit darker. And again, we studied the, the relationships between the stroke of the letter and the baseline between. In this case, we chose to keep it quite thin so that your eye would read horizontally, but it also allows your eye to dip and read vertically and make connections between the different quotes. So I would like to read one of the passages. Um, what does love look like? It has hands to help others. It has feet to hasten to the poor and needy. It has eyes to see misery and want. It has ears to hear the sighs and the sorrows of men. That is what love is, St. Augustine. So obviously this is not a visitor destination. There's not selfies in front of the homeless shelter. Um, but we did find one image um, that was posted by an Instagram user that was really the most moving, and this is when uh, someone who was homeless is getting their keys to their temporary housing. And to be able to do work where we get to be involved just in any way in that experience is, is really meaningful to us. So with that, I'd like to say thank you.